Good morning, church. <clears throat> Greetings to all of you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, <clears throat> Jesus Christ. It's such a blessed morning that God has given to us to come together to worship His name and glorifying, uh, glorifying Him together. We are coming to the 12th uh, chapter of Romans this morning. Uh, <clears throat> It's very important uh, chapters 12 to 15. When we study the scripture, uh, uh, we could actually see how specifically the Pauline writings, when Paul writes, uh, Paul always in the beginning, the, the initial part of his messages, he's speaking about letters he wrote, he always speaks about who Christ is and what Christ has done and who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, he makes sure that that message is given and then he speaks about the practical responsibilities or who, how you should uh, uh, respond to the love that you have received, how you should respond to the, uh, to the message of Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, so the same pattern you will see in book of Romans also. Extensively, book of Romans chapter 1 to 11, uh, he has spoken about uh, salvation. Amen. Uh, we have seen how uh, Paul has taken an effort to uh, detaily uh, speak to us about every, probably every nuances of salvation. Uh, there are aspects of church in the Ephesians, but rather when it comes to salvation, when it comes to who you are in Christ Jesus, when it comes to uh, what Christ has done, it's dealt well in Book of Romans. So Book of Romans always been a book that uh, you know we give to a new believer ask them to read and understand and study then we tell them to move with the gospels we ask them to study other epistles so what we read uh, in uh, from uh, now onwards as we study from romans chapter 12 onwards you will see a lot of things about doing you know uh, it all chapter 11 we heard about what christ has done for us what god has done for us now from chapter 12 onwards you will see a lot of things that you should do, amen, in responding to the love that you already received from God. It's very, very important chapters, uh, chapter 12 onwards. Specifically, as I'm going to deal with chapter 12, I will not rush the way that we have done in a few other chapters, like we finished one chapter and all of Book of Romans uh, in a week. Uh, but uh, now onwards, at least till a couple of chapters, we'll be going very slow because every verse is important, specifically uh, the, what we're going to study this coming weeks, uh, uh, each verse is important. Uh, if I rush, and uh, probably we will miss out the entire message, and specifically the second most important part of the book of Romans. So hoping and praying that we will slowly study and encourage you to read as we study the scripture. Uh, let's look into the first two verses uh, of Romans chapter 12, and uh, then we will look into only one verse this morning, and we will pray. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Verse 2, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and prove what, what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I know we have heard hundreds of messages to this through two verses because the two powerful verses in the New Testament. Amen? And very important verses. Very important verses as a Christian probably we need to keep reminding ourselves. Am I audible? Am I audible to all of you? All right. yeah. So uh, we need to <clears throat> remind ourselves these verses as we study. Let's read the first verse itself. Let's begin with the first verse. It says, therefore. So when we know whenever we hear the word therefore, uh, we are speaking about, or Paul is speaking about everything that is before. Now, we don't know where to start from. Probably this, therefore, is actually we should start from the chapter 1 itself. Because we have come to a conclusion of uh, uh, everything uh, Paul wanted to speak concerning the salvation to all and salvation to the Israel. He has done uh, that. Last week, we have seen it. So, therefore, because of what Christ has done, we look into that. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. In view of what? In view of God's, God's mercy. 
God's mercy. Some translation speaks about God's mercies. Right? It speaks about the many mercies of God. Which is this? This mercies of God which is there in chapter 1 to 11. Amen? The mercies of God is revealed in chapter 1 to 11. Who God is and what Christ has done for us is revealed in chapter 1 to 11. And in that view, right? In view of God's mercies, right? Therefore, I urge you, it's more of a commandment. It's, I beseech, another verse speaks about, I beseech you. I urge you in the mercies, in, in the view of God's mercies, right? The mercies of God that we have already seen in chapter 1 to 11. So what is that Paul going to speak in chapter 12 to 5 stems out of his statements of faith in the earlier part of the letter. Specifically, let's read Romans chapter 11, verse 31 to 36. We have read it last week. Just wanted to read it again. So they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. He speaks about the God's mercy because of the disobedience of the Gentiles. Sorry, Israel. We have seen last week. We have received the God's mercy. We have received the God's mercy. Verse 32, he says, for God has bound everyone over to disobedience so that he may have mercy uh, on them all. Then he speaks about 33 onwards that are powerful verses. Uh, some of your Bible will have something a doxology says. The praises. He giving the praises to God for everything that he's been studying and he's been discussing in, this, in their book. He says that oh the depth of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable is judgment and his path beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of Lord and who has been his counselor. Who has ever given to God that God should repay them. For from him and through him and for him all things to him be the glory forever. Amen. So this is how Paul finished actually its entire uh, sermon or writings about who Christ is and what Christ has done uh, for us and for surely for Israel too. So what is the summary of 1 to 11? I want to quickly read out the summary of everything that we have learned because when you read chapter 12 to 15, we should not read in isolate. No, we should not isolate that verse and read. Many a times we make this mistake of isolating 12 to 15 uh, and ask people to do a lot of things completely forgetting what Christ has already done for us. Amen. So see, our worship is coming out of uh, out of the very reverence and very respond to what already what God has done for us. Amen. So we are not worshipping God to get something from it. We are worshipping Him because we have, we have God everything. Amen. So it is not about, see, I'm going to worship this Sunday morning to get something. But more than that, our worship is actually more of coming out of thanksgiving to God for what God has already done for us. Let me just quickly read out a, a small summary of what we have learned. So we have learned from 1 to 11 that all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. The Jew, the Gentile, the atheist, the free, the bound, the men and the women. Yes, all, Bible says. But God and His faithfulness came to fulfill the promises given to Abraham to justify and set humanity free from sin and from the power of sin. He demonstrated His love for us. Why? Bible says that while we were still sinners, He died for us. Now a new way is open for Jew and, and for Gentile to be forgiven, justified and to be righteous. The way of faith, everyone who puts their faith in the, in the completed work of God, a work of Christ, or in the faithfulness of God shall be saved, Romans Paul says. Jesus' death on the cross has not only forgiven my sin, but also gave me the power to overcome the sin. I am no more under the bondage of sin, but I am under the grace, Paul says. Law was unable to save me, but His grace has set me free. Now I am dead to sin and I am alive to God. I am secure in Him because there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. And no force on the world, on the earth can ever separate me from the love of Christ. I am more than conqueror through Christ Jesus. 
Now this is still chapter uh, 8. This is what we have, we have learned. This is a kind of a, a small summary. We are set free from the power and the bondage of sin. Amen. Because of what Christ has done on the cross. We believe and we put our faith in the completed work of Christ. Amen. On that basis, on that foundation, we read from, uh, from the chapter 12 verse 1 onwards. So it speaks about how are we responding to the mercies that we have received from God. Paul says that we worship him. And you know, day, day and night, uh, by uh, as, as a response to the love that we have received to Him, we know worship is not something that we do on a Sunday morning itself. You know, worship is not something that we do on a particular day, on a festival day, on a fasting day, nothing like that. Worship is is a lifestyle. We say always. We have to worship him always. In everything that we do, we worship him. In everything that we think, we need to worship him. So that's our understanding of worship in the scripture. So let's come back to the, the verses that we have learned. Because of what Christ has done, because he has set me free from the sin. Yes, once I was dead to, uh, dead to the righteousness or dead to God. Now I'm dead to sin and I'm, al I'm alive to God and I'm alive to righteousness. Now I'm set free by the power of God to live a righteousness life and I remember of his mercies I thank God for his mercies and I live a life that would bring glory to his name so first thing that Paul says let's go back to Romans chapter 12 verse 1 so Paul says therefore therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy in view of what God has already done offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God this is your true true and proper worship when his verse is speaking about proper worship, it, it is, it, there are different words that has been used to. Some, some uh, Bibles is, is speaks about an uh, intelligent worship, right? Uh, some, uh, and in a, my vernacular language, Malayalam actually uses that word of intelligent worship. It speaks about intelligent worship. Some by your translation use the proper worship. Anything. What does it exactly mean? How do we know that we are worshipping God? How do we know that it's, our, our worship is true? Right? How do we know that actually uh, we are uh, giving all the honor and the glory that is due to him? How do we know that we are responding uh, to God by, in faith of everything that we have received from him? We know by this and Paul says that oh, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. So Paul says, how can I, uh, what, what should I do? I, sh I should be offering my bodies as a living sacrifice, acceptable, holy and pleasing to God. And this is to or pleasing or it's also mean that acceptable uh, to God. What is this offering your bodies? Right, that's what you want to look at. Okay, so why are we offering our bodies? To get the salvation. Why are we offering our bodies? Because we have already received the salvation. Right? That's all. Let's read one a, a, a huge verse in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 6, verse 12 to 20. It says, I have right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. You say food for the stomach and the stomach for food and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. It says the body, can we go back? Yeah, thank you. The, the body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality. Body is not meant to do what we want to do. Body is not meant for the pleasures of this world. No, body is not just meant for uh, whatever my heart desires to do, I want to do through this body. No, he says, see, the body is not meant for that, but body is, belongs to whom? It is for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Next verse. I'm not getting into the details of this verses because that's a, a con in context when we look at the this has different uh, meanings and I'm not going to get into it. So by 14 verse 14, by his power, God raised the Lord from the dead and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute never do you not know that he who unites himself with the prostitute is one with her in body it is said the two will become uh, one flesh 
but whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit, flee from sexual immorality. All of the sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins, sin, sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are the temple of Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Hope you're getting that part, right? So when Paul speaks about offer your bodies, he's actually speaking about the entire being. Now, there was always a philosophical understanding by saying that the spirit is a different thing. The body is altogether a different thing, right? You can do whatever that you want to do with the body. The body is going to die one day, but the spirit is only will live forever. So spirit will live forever. So it doesn't matter what you do with your bodies. That's not a Christian understanding. Christian understanding of body is this, that body is holy. I mean, your as an entire being is Holy, your eyes supposed to be holy, your head, your thought, your leg, your hand, every part of your body is holy unto the Lord. So can we, can we go back to the verse 19? 19 onwards. Do you not know that your bodies are the temple of God? This is the body where the God, God lives and who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. The first understanding. So why Paul is asking us to offer ourselves, offer not ourselves, offer our bodies to the Lord because this body is not belongs to you. It is not your own. It belongs to the Lord. It is God's. And you were bought at a price. Such as the mercy of God. You are already bought at a price because you were slave to sin. You were in that slave market standing without knowing what to do. You were sold to sin. But here comes Christ gave a price and he bought you out of the slavery and set you free. And because you are bought at a price now, whose this body is? Who bought you? Christ bought you. He set you free means? He asked us, okay, go wherever you want. No. He bought you and he made his own family. His in, he, we are being part of his family now. So we belong to whom? We belong to him. So therefore, he says, let's honor ourselves or honor God with our bodies. So he speaks about offering your bodies or presenting your bodies. Offer yourselves fully. Nothing with all. So when he, when he uses this word, it's more of an Old Testament word. We know Old Testament. When people go goes to worship, they used to take what? offerings also to the tabernacle to the presence of God it might be an animal it might be various kinds of this is more of he's speaking about that sacrificial offering that they used to take right to be sacrificed for that's a, that's the same tone or the same language Paul is using here so the first thing that Paul says you belongs to the Lord so we must offer your bodies your entire being your mind your thoughts your desires your plan your purpose your your heart everything nothing for ourselves Everything you and uh, everything is sold out for him. Our thoughts, emotions, and our will, our eyes, our tongue, our hands, and feet. Give your body to do righteousness, not sin, and we must honor God with the entire being. So it speaks about the body, the mind, the heart, right? The soul and the spirit. Everything is belongs to the Lord. So when Paul says, Because you belong to the Lord, you no more belong to the world, you no more belong to yourself. The very important understanding that New Testament gives to us is you don't even belong to, to yourself. Once you belonged, once you were under the powers of this world, you belong to the world. Now you belong to Christ alone, exclusive. There is nothing or again, half I belongs to myself and half belongs to Christ. Half heart is mine, half I let my God decide for me. No, your will, your thoughts, your purpose, your plan, everything that you're laying before the Lord. You're offering, you're presenting yourself complete to God. That is what God is expecting us now. Everybody who have received the mercies of God, who have experienced the mercies of God, the love of God, and that is what Paul says, let's continue to offer our bodies. It's a continuous thing because before the salvation or the during salvation process also we offer our bodies. That's why we speak about how our bodies are crucified with Lord Jesus Christ. In the entire baptism thing then when we say it speaks about how your bodies are crucified. We identified ourselves with Jesus and we crucified our old being with his desires. We'll re read those verses. Let's read one more verse. First Peter chapter 2 verse 5. 
Okay, this verse is important. It says that you also like living stone are being built into spiritual house to be holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now, this is very, this verse is very important. Now, when even when Paul is speaking about offering yourself completely to God, when Paul speaks about giving yourself completely to him, you don't belong to yourself. He do ask us, he, he's, so he is asking us or he is, he is demanding a perfection. Surely he is demanding a perfection. But we know on a, every min, minute of our time we are not perfect. So whenever we speak about sacrifice, it is not without what? Without Jesus Christ. So he says that you also living stones are being, who we are? We are dead stones and living stones. We are living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be what? To be a holy priesthood. We are being built together to be a holy priesthood. Offerings, what sacrifices? Spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. But is, that is always through Jesus Christ. All the offering that I gave, when I give myself completely, when I say I give myself fully, but I know somewhere I haven't given fully. <laughs> but somewhere I know, I've, I'm, 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 I know, though I'm not lying, but I'm lying. I know when I say I'm giving you, Lord, completely. But when we go back home, we know there are some portions that we also kept for you. So no sacrifices will ever be complete, full acceptable to God without Lord Jesus sacrifice it is through Jesus amen it is always through Jesus that's why there is so much of importance for faith in uh, in, in Christianity so by the way the the message that I'm going to speak the title of the message is uh, authentic <clears throat> we spoke about authentic faith produces authentic works you need to understand this very important thing many times we miss this very important aspect Authentic faith, what produces? Authentic work. See, you cannot produce work. That's a simple aspect. You cannot. We humanity have failed to produce the true righteous works of the Lord. We have failed, utterly failed. If any one of you just think like that, I can do it. No, you cannot do it. You can only do it when you come continue to put our faith in faith in God it is only through Jesus you and I will be able to do the righteous things what God is demanding see if I ask you something can you forgive people we say yes but can we forgive our enemies now we have a problem it's so easy to forgive our near one our best friend our bestie uh, uh, the one who's next very close to our heart it's easy you know, it's not that difficult it's okay it's okay it's okay it's okay but what about enemies? If someone thinks that this is something naturally that will flow from you. This morning after the message, I've decided to forgive all my enemies. But let me tell you, by the time you drive back home, your mind will tell you a thousand things not to forgive that person. <laughs> your mind will keep telling you one thing. that you know, Why you should do this? These, these, these things, they have done it. Right? That simply means, you look at this. This is a very important, look at this, we have failed and we will continue to fail. Only when we come back to him and say, Lord, this is the thing. The thing is, I really want to forgive this person. That's why we always say, the Lord, give me the grace, give me the power, give me the strength to do the righteous thing that you have asked me to do. It is only through faith. It is not without Christ. Everything that we offer on a Sunday morning, everything that we offer on a Monday morning, or Tuesday, or Wednesday, or any day, any moment, nothing is by myself. It is all through Lord Jesus Christ. And those offerings are acceptable. Understand this truth. That's a foundation on which we need to stand. Right? So we offer ourselves, because of what Christ has done, we offer ourselves through Jesus, not without Jesus. It's always through Jesus Christ. Okay, let's let's continue to look. So let's offer our thoughts, let's offer our desires and plans and purpose, our tongue, our thoughts, our feet, our body entirely belongs to the Lord. Full belongs to the Lord. Nothing belongs to us. Full belongs to the, completely belongs to the Lord. Now how can I offer? How does it, what does it mean by practically what does it mean? It simply means die, die, die to yourself and offer yourself to God. Die to yourself and offer yourself to God. Let's see, when Jesus spoke about disciples, when Jesus called his disciples and many wanted to follow Jesus, but when people want to follow Jesus, Jesus said, see, you must be ready to 
carry the cross. It's very important. You must be ready to carry the cross. Those who wanted to follow me, they must take their cross and then they must follow. Let's read Galatians chapter 5 verse at 24. It says, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passion and its desire. It speaks about a passion. It says that those who belong to Christ, they have crucified. They have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So when, when Paul said that you need to submit, you need to surrender, you need to give, uh, you, know, you need to present, you need to offer your bodies, he also meant that your passions and your desires also must be offered because it is already, it's already crucified. Because we live in this flesh, my dear brothers and sisters, our desires are our thought, our passions and all will come back. That's why Paul says, let's continue to offer. This is not a statement which you offer. You offer 2010. You offered once in 10 years back, 20 years back, once and forever, I have offered my bodies. No, it is a continuous process that you need to keep offering ourselves to God. Amen? We need to keep offering our eyes to God. We need to keep offering our head, our thoughts to God. We need to keep offering our ears to God. We need to keep offering our legs to God and arms to God and everything to God. Keep offering, keep offering. We can't stop it, always. That means I need to be careful. What am I watching? What am I hearing? What am I thinking? What am I doing? Amen? Amen? If some of us, if any one of us thinks that, okay, now I can just, uh, you know, see what I want to see. I can hear what I want to hear. I can think what I want to think. I can do what I want to think. do. Let me tell you, then you are thinking wrong. Because Bible says that you have already crucified yourself, your desires and your passions, your eyes, your leg, everything. Jesus said another important statement. What did he say? If, if it's something that is causing, stumbling, you know, bringing stumble, you know, stumbling block to you, what you should do? You should... Just say it's okay. It's okay. That's what Jesus said. Yeah, come on. Church, I'm asking you, it's because it's, a, it's a hot. There is a high possibility that you can... Some of you haven't slept yesterday night because it was Saturday. Some of you are busy with your works and other things. I'm asking you a question to just think, you know. Come on, what did Jesus say? Cut it off. Come on, yes. Now, okay, now you're alive. <laughs> Cut it off. That's what Jesus said. No compromise, you know. Jesus said it's a serious thing. Okay, if your eye is sinning, what do you need to do? Repent. Cut it off. Come back to him. When I say that, it's not just decision. But come back to him. Ask for more grace. There are a lot of people who are still living in guilt. You know, you will end up living in guilt until unless you come back to him and receive the forgiveness. And receive the power from him to do what God is expecting us to do. Okay, let me come, come to this. And those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh. So that simply means their bodies are already offered as a sacrifice. With its passions and with its desires. So Galatians chapter 2.20, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that night, now, now I live in my flesh, I live by Faith, look at that word, by faith in Son of God. That's why I'm, I've, been, I've been telling you. Many a times we think, as I said, that see, when I say that, uh, you know, uh, say that your decisions cannot just bring those, uh, bring those transformations because these verses Paul himself reminds. Now I live a life that I put my faith in whom? Because in, in the scripture, in God's word, faith is always active. It's not that I am doing something. It is more about what God is doing through you. I recently listened to a beautiful testimony. Unfortunately, this is in Malayalam. And this testimony actually about a young person who is just 24 years old, 24, 25 years old, came to Christ when he was in his 20s, 21, 22, that age, uh, coming from a different religious background. I probably in my entire life have never heard the testimony like this. Now, there is nothing dramatic and there is nothing like, uh, you know, nothing so big about this testimony. But what is, what is testimony is very, very important. What I like this all about him, mean, he's just a young chap who have kind of lived in this world and failed to do his commitments. 
he was not able to study well he finished his 12th and went into college and he was he was couldn't attend the classes properly so he flung and he was out of the college so one day he came to know Christ he was a broken person went into depression and a lot of things happened he came to hear about Lord Jesus Christ and when he heard the gospel the whole gospel started transforming him there was moments in his life where he extremely truly experienced God and the kind of lifestyle that he has changed. Then what happened? He was, he, he was somehow led to an, uh, uh, you know, addiction, de-addiction center because he also was addicted to substances and all those things. But there he went and he was, he came out of all those, all those things, and he became kind of a caretaker in that de-addiction center. He was taking care of those people, and he was taking care of those people. Those were wild, and you know, the de-addiction center, not people are always happy and you know, cool and all. They become wild if they don't get what they want. So he worked with that kind of person. Then, then he was led to a, a, a government hospital to take care of the people, those who are, uh, those who are without their children or with, without caretakers. So he was taking care of a lot of people. And all these things, he said one word, and I loved it. He said, see, I am not this person at all. I, as a person, I am not someone who would ever take care of these old people. They are not even my parents. They are not my grandparents. They are not even related to me at all. When it comes to blood relation, I am absolutely nobody to them. But the kind of suffering that he went through, in a sense, the kind of things that God did through him, he keep reminding himself, you know, he was, he was sharing it so many times in his testimony by saying that, see, I am absolutely not like this. I am not this. I cannot take care of anybody because I myself couldn't take care of myself. How can I take care of someone? No, I couldn't. Then he says that it was God's life, Christ's life that transformed me and help me and enable me to do what I did in those hospital and de-addiction center. Sometimes we need to understand, we go back to him. We come back to Christ. It's not that we are so perfect, my dear brothers and sisters. We go back to him not because we are doing everything right. We go back to him, we know because there is no other way for salvation. There is no other place where we'll be able to come out and do the righteous thing, what God is expecting us to do. We can never fulfill God's commandment until and unless God's life flow through us. No, you cannot produce it. Why do I pray? Because I can't produce this righteous work. Why do I fast? Why do I sit in the presence of God and seek His face? Because I cannot do it. Humanity have failed to do what God expects us to do. It's only through faith. So He says that I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. Because Christ lives in me, the life that I now live in my body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. So Bible speaks about that faith that we put in God that can transform us. Amen. And that transforming power of God. So that's what Paul is mentioning here. Right. I have a lot of verses to read. All right. So it says that see how I've been crucified with Lord Jesus Christ. I no more live with Christ lives in me. So once our old self is crucified on the cross, it is a new creation. So Bible says those who are in Christ, they are new creation. The old has, the old has passed away. Come on church. Can I get, can someone get me the paper? Yeah. All right. Let me just read one more verses. Romans chapter 6 verse. Thank you. Romans chapter 6 verse 12 to 14. All right, it says, let's, okay, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desire. So when Paul speaks about offering yourself to the Lord, he's speaking about let not sin reign in your mortal body so that you may obey its, you obey its evil desires. <clears throat> Next verse, yeah. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from dead to life. Offer yourself to God. Offer yourself because you belong to the Lord. Let every part of your body instrument of, you know, which was an instrument of wickedness, and now it's no more instrument of wickedness or sin, but rather you offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. And verse 14, for sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under law, but under grace. This is important. Because you are under grace, verse 13 is actually possible. Why 13 is possible? Why verse 13 is possible? Because you are under grace. 
If it, you are under the, under the law, can we go back to the verse 13? If he is under the law, then you will not be able to offer yourself completely to God. No, now he is asking us to offer yourself. It is because you are set me from the sins of this world. Because there is grace of God that given to us. So now you can offer your bodies. Now verse 8 to 12, Paul says in Romans, he says that therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to flesh, to live according to flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But by, but if by spirit you put to death the misdeeds of your body, you will live. How? How you put, uh, can you, yeah, exactly. How you put to death, how you put to death your misdeeds of your body? By, by what? By spirit. Come on, where are you? But if you buy spirit, that you will be able to put to death. See, how can I put to death my eyes, my hands, my legs, my thoughts, my desires, my evil passions? How? It is by spirit. It is by only by Holy Spirit. The God Spirit has to strengthen us and God Spirit has to enable us to do. I had a... Quickly, just I'll, I'll say this word. We'll continue next week. How come I have only got this? All right. So, a few examples I wanted to bring before you quickly, and I wanted to close it here. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 speaks about this. And without faith, that it is impossible to please God. So, when we when we read this verse, it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Our bodies should be holy and it is pleasing to God. And it should be living sacrifice. Living sacrifice. How do we know that we are, it's a living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice? When, we, when there are few examples in the Bible and few sacrifices in the Bible, which is very, very famous. One, uh, one offering is, you know, the only offerings of Christ, Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. We call it as a living sacrifice. Why is it a living sacrifice? Jesus completely gave himself in obedience to God's purposes it is not only that he's continued to live even after he continued to live after the death of lord jesus christ right this jesus death has significance today yes it still saves the sinners the blood of jesus is still active amen it cleanses our consciousness it cleanses the consciousness of the people who believes it simply means that it, through the spirit god's work is still active and there are a few more offerings that was living in the presence of god that was abel's offering bible says that's why when uh, Blessing mentioned this verse, he says that Abel's, you know, Christ's offering is better than Abel's offering. But the Christ, you know, blood of the Abel also was crying out for justice. Why? Why was it crying out for justice? It because it was a living sacrifice. It was a sacrifice that was given in full obedience. When you read book of Revelation, there is actually speaks about the saints. Saints who were slaughtered. Uh, for the sake of gospel. And would they cry out to God and say that God, when are you going to do the avenge, right? When you take in the avenge, when will you, when will you not punish, but rather when will you bring the justice to the blood that we have shared? Because their lives were living sacrifices. It was not a death sacrifice. Not a, it was a living sacrifice. So Bible speaks about Abel offering was accepted. Genesis chapter 4 verse 4. It says, And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. It speaks about God was pleased with Abel and also his offering. God accepted his offering because God was pleased with Abel. But God was not pleased with Cain. Why? Can we have Jude chapter 1 verse 11? Quickly reading, What to them they have taken the way of Cain? They have taken the way of Cain. What happened? Let's read John, 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why he murdered him? Why he murdered him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. So it speaks about it. It kind of gives us an understanding. It's not about what he brought to the presence of God. First thing, Abel came to the Lord by faith, you know. A uh, very important thing that we need to know, it is not only the actions, but also Abel as a person, when he came to God, he came to God by faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4 says, Yo, can we have that verse? It says, by faith, Abel brought God a better offering that Cain did. By faith. So when we come, we come by faith. We bring our offering by faith. 
But for Cain, surely he lived an unrighteous life, so he did not buy, bring his offering by faith. He just brought it because everybody else is bringing. Because probably he brought it because he, there is a festival happening. He has to bring it, so he brought it. Probably because he obliged to do it. Probably his parents asked him to do it. There was no faith in that offering. So there are a lot of worship that God, has, God was pleased with. Why God was pleased with their offering? Because it was living. Because there was faith in it. Because there was action also was, was accompanied. I always say this. If your heart is not present in the offering, that offering is of no use. In every offering that we give, which the, the, our hearts also should be there. That's why we say that God loves what kind of giver? The Bible doesn't say that God loves the giver. No? He says that God loves the it's an act, act of heart. This worship begins from heart. It's not about God is looking at, okay, did you pay 100 or did you give 1,000 or 10,000 or 1 lakh? That's number. God is looking at our heart first. Where, whether we are giving it with full heart, rejoicing and giving it to the Lord. Amen? And happy, you know, with full of joy that we're giving the offering to the Lord. Now, Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. I know time is up. Kids, done. One minute. Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. And I conclude here. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from... Can you read that verse? Having received from... I mean... Yeah. Uh, having received from Ephrodites the gifts you send, they are fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to... God. Paul says, what you have offered, what you have given in the name of the Lord, this is pleasing to the Lord. Why? It is because it was coming. The church is given to him, given to him in their own difficulties, in their own suffering times. My dear brothers and sisters, I'll continue this next week as we study further. Why are we worshiping? Shall we close our eyes together? Why are we worshiping the Lord today? We are worshiping him. Not because of we want some good things to come tomorrow. We are not worshipping. We are not glorifying him. Because. Because of anything else. Because we want or because we want to accept it by, accept it by God. But this morning we worship him. We worshipped him singing and hearing his word. And we are going to continue to worship him. Throughout this day and, and next week and to the entire life, we worship Him only because we just remember the mercies of God. Hallelujah. As Bible says, while still we were sinners, He died on the cross of Calvary to save us. And now Paul is urging us, beseeching us, commanding us, let's continue to offer our bodies just like how Jesus offered his body as a living sacrifice on the cross of Calvary for the sins of the humanity, for, to save us from our sins, to save us from our ourselves. Here comes Bible reminds us, let's continue to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice Holy and acceptable to God. It is not about how well you sang those songs that we have sung in this morning. It is not just about one and a half hours or two hours of your day that you are spending in the church. It's good. But it's not about that. If you go back from this place without surrendering your will, Without surrendering your heart, without surrendering your plan, without surrendering your purposes, without surrendering your eyes and feet and ears and entire being, our will, our thoughts, without surrendering ourselves completely, then God's word reminds us this worship wasn't complete. God's word reminds us the true worship, the worship that is pleased to God, a worship that is proper. A worship that is intelligent. Bible says when we offer ourselves completely to God. Will you offer this morning yourself to him? He doesn't, he doesn't want anything that you could give to him. But rather he wants you. He is asking because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And because we don't belong to ourselves and we don't belong to the world but we belong to him. Continue to offer ourselves to him.
let's not offer our bodies to the unrighteousness of this world let not our ear hear which is unrighteous let our eyes see things which is which are unrighteous which are unholy let not have any unholy thoughts but rather let's continue to bring and offer it before the lord by faith knowing lord i'm not perfect but i've chosen to be perfect i've chosen this path of perfection i've chosen this path of righteousness because i don't belong to the world i don't belong to myself i belong to you this morning church let this be our prayer real prayer genuine prayer authentic faith always accompanies with authentic works it produces authentic work it's not because of who you are it's just because of who we see you are not doing the righteous act by your own power bible says it is by the spirit of god you shall be able to kill the mistakes of your body it is only by the spirit of god this morning let's surrender ourselves let's surrender our sinfulness let's repent let's come back to him let's let's surrender ourselves completely your situation your thoughts your past your past let's not go back home with a lot of guilt feeling but i wanted to say it is by faith you are saved let continue to surrender our past our failures our wrong doings our unholiness our sinfulness let's surrender and ask god to make it righteous and new because those who are in christ they are a new creation the old has gone the new has come father we thank you for this blessed morning we are grateful lord father for this morning that you given to us we pray that we shall continue to worship your name o lord we don't worship you because of anything else that we need in this world but rather you are worthy of all our worship you are worthy of all this adoration o lord because of all the mercies of god that we have experienced and we are experiencing in life lord father we wanted to worship you lord let not our lip worship you but let our hearts worship you lord let our entire being worship you lord in the name of jesus hallelujah we pray lord as a church that we shall continue to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice that is holy and pleasing to god so that we know that we are worshiped you lord hallelujah it is through jesus we are righteous it is through him we are saved it is through lord jesus we are delivered from the sins of this world thank you jesus for your done continue to bless us together may your name be glorified in the name of jesus we pray together amen god bless you can we have our children come forward and